Okay, so next up is Alex May, international digital artist working with mind computer technologies, computer programming, maths, power tools, and physical objects as a canvas to create hybrid visions of images and unexpected context. His first computer was a ZX81 that didn't work properly. Did you, did you get it to work properly? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, give it up for Alex May. It's, yeah, it's been very, very nice to uh, have the opportunity to come and speak. I spent the past couple of weeks just deeply reminiscing and, and having a big old nostalgia trip and digging up all this old stuff that uh, I used to be so sort of into. It. So, uh, yeah, if you forgive me, I'll just have a little sort of continuation of this. Sure. Uh, so, it was, yeah, it was in 1980. I was a regular kid, you know, running around with BMXs and uh, really like magic and uh, running around and just, you know, general average kids. And um, I was an only child and I sort of had to, you know, uh, lovely kid, parents and things like that. And then one day they say, well, you're going to have a brother, you have a new brother. Uh, and I say, okay, that's, that sounds pretty cool. Um, but I think they were a bit worried that. Uh, after sort of about eight years of being an only child, that, that I might miss some of the parental attention. Uh, so around that time, these adverts started appearing. And as uh, you know, the question for the Raspberry Pi test, it's very similar. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I started seeing this, and, and I didn't know what these, these things were, and but they, they looked really good. And, and uh, so I've, I've, in discussions with my parents, I. I Persuaded them to, to get me on these uh, in return for their lack of attention, but it, it, it wasn't as bad. Um, so, uh, to, yeah, got one in, in sort of 1981 and it took ages to get one because everyone was, you know, making them, I think Sinclair was making them in the shed. Uh, so, it took ages to get it, and uh, when I got it, I didn't, didn't know what to do with it because, uh, you know, the, the basic manual that, that came with it. I mean, I, I, it's written by Steve Vickers, who, who did the uh, software for the special. And the ZX81, I actually wrote to him um, to ask a couple of <coughs> really impertinent questions that I had. And he's, he very kindly you know, replied. And, and, so I don't want to slag him off too much, but it's a terrible manual. It's, <laughs> um, you know, you can't really blame him because it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, who really had any experience at that time of writing programming manuals for eight-year-old kids, you know. Um, but it's, and I was particularly taken with, with this, if, if anybody's into agile development or scrum development, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this is how we did it, you know, a lot of hair pulling and uh, find the bugs and, and fix them, introducing as few new ones as possible. <laughs> I still follow this today, this, this is sound sage advice. Um, so it, it wasn't really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of really didn't know what to do with it. I mean, the, the manual was bad because it, because it really didn't start with the interesting stuff. It started with the really the most boring things. There was a chapter of how to use it as a calculator. And, and but calculators are much easier to use as calculators. It's, it's a design for that. And, and, you know, as, as we all know, the, the kind of cryptic things you have to do to get to get the right symbols and everything. It just seemed like a lot of work to, to operate this thing. And it, it didn't make any sense. So it was there, this, this lovely object. I thought, you know, sitting there. And, and so I just got off and played on the BMX and, and <laughs> do, do magic and stuff. And, and, um, so, so one day, I sort of um, sitting down with my dad. And we typed in this, this program. From chapter 11, I had to get through 11 chapters before before this, and something very magical happened for me. Uh, you type that in and you get that out, uh, which is, is uh, you know, as you probably tell, is, is the ZX81 character set, including the, the kind of fun graphics uh, that it had, and all the keywords which were stored as one by characters. Um, this did something to my head. This, this uh, so, you know, my eyes sort of sprang open and I think it was it was that I typed something in uh, that looked like this, and I got this out, and it was kind of unexplainable. And, and 
I didn't know what was what the relationship between the two. It was, it was um, and ever since that moment, it's been the same thing. I'm, I'm trying to sort of explore this moment for me that this was uh, basically I knew this was what I wanted to do. This is this is my my life. <laughs> um, now I did mention that my Z81 didn't work properly. Uh, it had a, a Oh yeah, I forgot this one. This, this is me. I, I became completely obsessed with this with this thing. Uh, you can actually, it's, it's, it's kind of just in there behind Astro Wars. Uh, my black and white TV and, and you know, just everything so 80s. I've got the, the calculator watch on and, and everything, you know. So, and uh, this is how, I still got the hat with the, the lightning bolts. Um, and I just, I just be hunched over this thing, just typing and typing code for hours and hours and hours and hours. Because uh, what was wrong with my ZX81 was that the audio plugs were both broken and I, I couldn't save all load code. This was obviously a bit of a, a, bit of a hindrance. <laughs> uh, and so we, we spoke to Sinclair and they said, look, you know, this is, you know I, was, I was distraught and, and obviously you know, can imagine. Uh, and they said, well, it's, with the high demand and everything, it's going to take two months to send it back and, and get a new one. I, I couldn't be separated from my new uh, device from each other. So, so I left it. I, I just, and if I wanted to program something, I typed it all in, and then I pulled the plug out, and reset, and it would look on. And if I wanted to use that same program, I typed it all in. Okay. <laughs> you learn to program pretty quickly <laughs> by doing this. And, and obviously started off with a 1K, Thing. I mean, got the 16K RAM pack at the back, uh, which just meant more typing because bigger program. Um, and I'm sure some of you know that you know the, the connectors weren't that great, so if, if you wobbled the RAM pack, it would crash the computer. And, and because you had to pull the power plug in and out to reset it, the power plug socket started failing, and, and, and that would wobble, and the whole thing was wobbling. And then you'd lose all the work, you'd be sitting there for hours getting to the 6,000th line and felt, and, and you're just typing that in, and then your mum put down a cup of tea and the whole thing <laughs> would just die. So, um, but, and, and you know, so this is 3D Monster Mode, a game I never ever got to play. I saw photos of it in magazines, and this looked like the best thing ever. You know. um, it was much better in my, in my mind. Uh, but, but I never got this, and, that, and so I was, I was just programming, and there were a couple of really classic. Uh, commands, the scroll command, which is shift the screen up by one line. That meant games, the right games using that. And I just unplot, I thought that was the best name for a command ever. <laughs> I think more of those, you know, we should have like, like, um, print. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's like this sort of built-in undo, I thought it was, just, that was, that was kind of lovely. So, um, and, I, and I was so, sort of, was using this so much. Um, you know, the keyboard on these things are, are really not made for, for hardcore kid usage. Uh, and the, the function new line button, which was which is the main button on the whole keyboard, is the return, it's, it's to get to all the secondary functions, it's, it's the kind of symbol shift and or it's that broke. And, and when that goes, you know, you've got a you've got a square frisbee, you know. Um, so yeah, that's not entirely true, but um, but by this time, of course, uh, this full color advert has been now being taken out. Um, and this looked much better. I mean, rubber keys and uh, color, and yeah, just looked really, really exciting and, and, and just, you know, really lovely design and, and everything. And I just thought, yep, yeah, you know, I want to get one of those. So I sort of persuaded my um, parents. Uh, Again, to, to, to outlay this, this uh, for this computer, and this, of course, meant because the, the uh, tape loading and saving worked, I could finally get some games. Guys, I was looking through the, the tape because all of the covers look like this, and you know, it's brilliant artwork. And I'm not sure there were any games where it actually had the graphics of the game on the cover. <laughs> um, because it looked, I mean, I did love, I love Check the Flag. It's, it's great. I was trying to remember if they, I think they introduced like obstacles on the road, like broken glass and things to make the game more interesting. It never happened on Swords. 
Um, but that was kind of fun. And, uh, you know, and, and going to love, love the games. There's so many games. I mean, you know, it's, it's obviously just a, a few, but, um, you know, I played all of them, all of the, all of the spectrum games, all 230,000 or whatever. I played them. Um, and it was, it was kind of, again, it was, it was kind of fascinating. It was, it was sort of being uh, not, not kind of, Immersive, but it, but it was like a real communication about things. You've got, I mean, talking only about Matthew Smith, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the imagination, the twisted imagination in, in those games, especially We Must Perform It Quirkively. Um, the characters, it was, it was literally, you kind of felt it was coming out of this guy's head, and he was programming this thing, putting, recording it direct onto a cassette tape and sending it out to the world, and, and then we could take that and sort of experience it, you know. Um, and obviously this thing may take forever to, to write, but, it, but the best games kind of had that feel to it, that we were sort of communicating in a, in a kind of a community, even though it was quite disjointed things. And all the, all the uh, magazines with huge game listings and, and all that, you know, that laptop that so quick at typing on the ZX Spectrum. I was, I was saying to games that, that uh, this is from some issue of Sinclair, you brought your Sinclair. Yes, that's me there. This, this one I solved three weeks in paradise really quickly and, and <laughs> wrote it up on a manual typewriter and sent it in and, and they published it. And uh, this, the text is, is, is uncredited, it's out there on the internet. And I'm very upset about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I solved it, I did it. Uh, it's actually really easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only Wally game I ever managed to finish. So. But it was good fun. Good fun. And um, so, you know, I was, I was kind of really, you know, sort of probably many of us really born at that, at that age, and it, I just kind of really took over a sort of big part of um, uh, kind of the friendships that you had and, and the, the experience of that time. I mean, it was so sort of ubiquitous in schools that, that I was walking home from school one day and I found this tape on, on the ground, unmarked C90 tape, and, and there's no one around, and, and so I took it up and I took it home because I thought, oh, I can you know, stick some game on. It was full of spectrum games, <laughs> you know, uh, really good ones. <laughs> it was, it was, I felt, you know, it's it kind of piracy, but. I wasn't directly doing it, <laughs> except in stolen goods, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was really that kind of ubiquitous and, and just everywhere. And because um, when, you, when you've got a system that, that everyone's got the same system, well, obviously you've got big black and doors and what we're going to talk to them. And, and uh, you know, but you, could, you were talking about things on a kind of similar level, and it was just down to your relative levels of, of experience and knowledge. And, uh, and that was quite a sort of interesting kind of, kind of time. But, but it, was, it was also this massive gap between um, the computer graphics coming out of big labs, you know. And I was fascinated by all this stuff. I mean, I mean, this is from 1979, you know. And, and this way, if you haven't seen this, this is really weird. It's on YouTube now, if you can find it. Um, and and uh, Tron and uh, Star Trek. Um, you know, these, these, so there was this sort of massive bridge between uh, the ZX Spectrum version of 3D graphics and the stuff that we were seeing at the cinema and all that. I mean, some lovely, lovely stuff, you know, I love VU3D. That was a sort of 3D modeling program with, with uh, like shading. I mean, it would render, I guess. <laughs> And that was about as complex as, as you'd want to get. Um, Antitac's first sort of 3D isomorphic projection game, although well, apparently it's excellent. Uh, and obviously, I mean, when I saw Night Law for the first time, my, my brain just fell out again. It was like, oh, God, is that the same computer? Um, in the game, I thought it was a bit rubbish. <laughs> uh, but the, the graphics top notch, and then they did that forever. And, um, so, <coughs> Obviously, there's very. I mean, there's, there's no code that I wrote uh, then that, that is available now. I mean, 
all the tapes had, had been lost or, or destroyed. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it, was, it felt very much like I was exploring and experimenting. Uh, one of the things that I did write was a, was a Mandelbrot uh, generator. And I took the, I had just the equation from the book at the time, and I, and I actually wrote in basics. And, uh, and this, is, this isn't real, this is a Photoshop version, but it looked like this. Um, and it would, even at this magnification, which is pretty much the highest magnification, it took a week to render that out. And, and um, I was, I was, you know, I was kind of happy, so I didn't touch the thing for a week. Just had to leave it and it got down to about here, and I realised that I'd forgotten to put a save picture <laughs> thing in. Because, you know, if, if you remember, like, once you the basic program would finish, the bottom two lines would, would get reset and, and you'd lose the, the kind of picture. So, the, so I sort of left this thing on for a week and it rendered the picture, so I looked at it. And I just had to kind of pull the plug and, and you know. <laughs> so, uh, so this, this it did look very much like this, but um, that, was, that was kind of fun. But yeah, that was, I, was, I was really into um, kind of used to find graphics. And, and, and I wasn't really into machine code. I, I did a lot of Z80 programming, ironically, later, working with like 33 megahertz Z80 chips and doing all sorts of their multiply instructions, I thought, which this picture would um, and as, as previously mentioned, the, the, all these, these incredible sort of um, copy protections, which, which uh, with jets that were really there, and, um, and then this, uh, not that I would have this kind of thing, but the, 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 this was to try and get at the sort of advanced tape copying software that would try and detect the, the speed at which things were being loaded. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty good play. Um, but my favourite was Lane's Lock, <laughs> um, which, which kind of, because I'm kind of pointing out all these things, because, because all these things kind of did have a, an influence on, on what I do now. Um, and I was always very intrigued by this because of the kind of optical effects. Uh, and, and as you can see from here, you get the idea there's a scramble on the John TV, you hold up the little lens and, and you get the two letters. Um, but it only worked for TVs of a certain size. <laughs> and if your TV was too big, uh, or too small, that's, you've just wasted your money. Uh, and I think it was, a, was it Elite that sent out the wrong lens for the game? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's, it was this sort of fantastic um, sort of battle you could even then. I mean, it's, it's even more prevalent now, and, and the lengths to which software companies will go through now to add deal on them. Uh, kind of things. It's, it's, it wasn't as cool as this. I think. As, you, as you get back to this, this will be fun. Um, but it, it was the kind of uh, idea that the, the spectrum, even though you know these computers were these, these quite small things, but, but you had the ability to extend them. It just sort of the, the Ethernet, you know, still got this power to to, to, be, to kind of come out of the. Uh, the, the computer itself and, and actually uh, interface with, with humans in, in interesting ways. So there was a big kind of light pen, uh, which was awful. Um, <laughs> and it would work by, you know, if you've ever used it, I wouldn't recommend it. It's, it sort of has the, the light coming down the, the scan of the TV and the point where the pen is on the screen, as soon as that lights up, it will say, right, it's, it's in that position. That has to flash the screen like 25 frames per second, or so you're literally like <laughs> trying to, and, and that would be great in theory with an art program, drawing program, but you didn't draw because you it's horrible. Um, the curry you speech, um, you know, everyone just make it make sweary sounds, and, um, and the uh, yeah, that's an interface two, uh, which obviously you plug your joysticks into. And um, this was the king of joysticks, the, the, the micro switch one. There's, there's a couple of leaf ones out there. I went through them like anything. It's about a load of them. They're great, but these ones stood up for years of various uh, games. <laughs> and I hacked one, but like an uh, auto fire. Uh, early mod. Which is kind of fun. Um, but it, it's, you know, it was, it was kind of, uh, yeah, it's exploring this, this kind of idea that, that these would, would introduce another kind of level 
in terms of how you, how you related to uh, this, this kind of hardware. Um, so I, I wanted to, what, what I was thinking about when I was, when I was asked to do this was, you know, really kind of put down in words kind of what, what I saw there, what, what I found. I mean, not just myself, obviously, lots of people, there was a, a generation of, of us that, that saw similar things. But, uh, but I knew, you know, instantly this is what I wanted to do. It's the coolest thing, everything, every, everything else was just, uh, I didn't understand it, but, but I, I knew this was it. Um, and I think from that very first program, the, the, I knew there was a link between the code, uh, the language of the, of the code, and, and the, the way we, we both both language that we use to communicate that like now, but also to communicate with the computer. That that sort of analogy carries on um, is, is sort of kind of this weird. Uh, Half step, you know. The, the, the sort of, when people talk about, you know, understanding of computers, they say, well, you know, that guy, you know, binary, and it's like, well, nobody programs in binary because that, that would be stupid. <laughs> you have a Morse code key, and you can <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, so uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of even machine code or C or Python or all these things that they're all these sort of different levels for sort of kind of attacking. The, the same thing. There's, there's lots of analogies, um, but but the key thing for me was that it was the image that there was a link to the image, uh, a link to you know some some kind of artistic expression. Uh, I didn't really know that at eight, eight years old, but it's it's kind of been become very prevalent in, in how I work because I will uh, write code and, and start playing around with things, and then things will come out of it like I didn't expect, which is often. Um, down to the hardware, it's having an influence in itself. So it's this sort of, sort of kind of coaxing these, these uh, artworks sometimes. Um, and the other, the other thing was, I mean, I've done, you know, I'm, I'm still with my thirties, but I've been, I've been programming for a long time, and, and my interests have just like gone all over the place. It, it was, you know, it, there was no difference to me. You know, the, 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 I can, if I want to do stuff in art and that. I need a bit of that, I have some of that, I love music, you know, the play guitar, and I have, you know, music for that, and uh, I used to use the, the Wham music box, which is uh, my favourite uh, music program of mine, and uh, any kind of science, you know, it, I, I mention this because, because I, sort of in academia it seems, just sort of everyone's, and even the way they teach programming now, it's, it's very like, you know, you, you can be this kind of program, um, or study this subject, and it's, it's very, uh, sort of blinkered, and, and then it, it, it just seemed like everything's up for grabs, and everything was interesting. Um, and, and more educational loads, because programming was far more interesting than what they were teaching me at school. And I, I kind of stopped doing homework, uh, and I never really did any again. Uh, constantly getting dragged in front of the headmistress. Of the world. But, um, but I felt like I was doing the, you know, kind of good work. Time, but they obviously couldn't understand. Uh, and obviously, crashing the computers was far more fun than, uh, you know, because it was sort of taken into all sorts of new, uncharted kind of um, areas. So, um, so that, that was kind of, and then I'll just skip through these, the next 24 years or whatever it is. Um, so, I went on to Amigas, because they were wonderful, uh, and that just kind of fueled the whole thing more and more. Um, I did computer science A level, but I didn't get a very good grade because I did my project in machine code. And I did a, a game where you had to, it was a two player game where, where you shoot the ships go around with a gravitational field in the middle, and you had to shoot the bullets and they kind of curve around. And, uh, and, and everyone else did this in Pascal, and the sort of, you know, an adding program. You know. so, uh, so I printed out all the machine code and, and they couldn't run it. And Mark me up very well for that. But I'd, I've been programming for 10 years already. Um, and I also did art, and that didn't go very well because, because the Amiga was, was a brilliant machine, was really good with work on video. Um, it, was, it was revolutionary at the time because you could change the clock of the Amiga to match the video source, so you could do synced 
graphics and, and the Lotus Studios we used to use it. So uh, I had a whole uh, desktop kind of video production thing. So I did digital video piece. The first year you could do it, I did a digital video piece um, where I generated all the music, all the graphics, all the film, all the music. And it was a five minute kind of calamitous sort of disco fueled interpretation of the Four Seasons by the Valley. Uh, <laughs> And it had just, I mean, loads and loads of stuff in there. And, and, uh, and they hated it. They, they just didn't know what it was. They didn't know how much effort or, or what had gone into it. Uh, they were, I think they were expecting somebody, you know, some little video pieces of somebody standing in the corner looking for them. Um, so I did very badly on, on that as well. Um, so I didn't go to university because I thought, oh, I can't. Um, <laughs> So I got dropped in programming, and then, and then basically I uh, was, was kind of a little bit uh, knocked by, the, by my reception of my digital art. So I didn't do it for a while. But then I got into VJing, which was um, you know, manipulation of live video and, and that kind of really source page me. And then I started developing software like that. And, uh, and then sort of was doing lots of work in the clubs. And, and it's not a particularly nice environment if you're just sort of sitting there and you've got four hours set and, and just people coming up to you. And, <laughs> so I got bored with that, so I thought, well, you know, what I'm doing is I sort of put really, uh, I think, you know, people seem to like it, and I really like doing it, so what about if we put it in an art gallery, and, and, and then I sort of went down with it, and wrote, I wrote all my own software of doing the art, and that became part of the thing, and, and uh, so, um, so that's what we're able to rush down with kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so this, this, this is where I sort of find myself today. So I've been programming, even though I'm not 40 yet, I've been programming for like over 30 years, and I'm really like if, almost every day kind of, kind of level of programming. Um, visiting research fellow, Austin University, is a University, a science department, um, co-director of a uh, company called Procutura, uh, where we're with um, one time collaborator Martin Smith, who's a sound artist, and we do lovely big video installation and kind of things. Uh, I'm the head of projective geometry at uh, the Institute of Unnecessary Research. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest you, there's a sort of uh, international group of artists uh, who are just totally focused on, on their own particular thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, to the point where, you know, this sort of this idea of unnecessary research is, uh, you know, well, what research is necessary? So poses that kind of uh, question. But yeah, check, check the, the thing out, it's quite fun. Uh, and I've exhibited work at the v a Science Museum this year, Science Gallery in Dublin, which is, is mm -hmm. amongst the new um, I'd be happy to tell you about that. Thanks. Um, but I think one of the main things that I kind of carried on from, uh, sort of stylistically, from, from working with Spectrum was, was just working with pixels. Uh, obviously, there's, there's Jet Set Ray, Mine Lee, not the uh, my version uh, by Matthew Smith. Um, you know, a little 16 by 16 box. And, and actually, because uh, I was very into bulletin boards, and I wrote a lot of bulletin boards. Uh, this is the only surviving image I could find of my anti art, which was, was very similar to the spectrum because you, you could only have two colours per block, and, uh, but you had a little bit more flexibility in the middle of the image. And that was a bit chucked over and over, and, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I loved, loved all the bulletin board stuff. Um, so I've, I've done some work which is based very, very sort of square on square on pixels. Um, this was a couple of years ago in Bournemouth. Uh, we were commissioned to, to present a project on this, this big global mon one monument, uh, which is, is much bigger than it looks in the photos. Uh, and I like this idea of, of representing the scale of, of the kind of casualties of, you know, this is, that's, that's how many UK people died in the, uh, in the uh, armed forces and civilian. And that's a, that's a lot of people. And, you, know, you can't really imagine that amount of people. So I did this piece which um, each pixel was, was one life. And we projected this number of pixels over the, the uh, memorial. And each pixel starts off with black, uh, goes from black to white over a range of between 30 to 40 seconds each year, each second is a year in that person's life. And then it goes red when they die. Um, so it's a nice cheery piece. Isn't it? 
Um, but, it, but it was a, it, 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 unintentionally, it was, it was, the rateness became like sort of fields of poppies, kind of, and it, and it was kind of quite a nice slow sort of rhythm. Bit. And, and uh, I, was kind of, I felt really sort of successful piece of people sort of looking at and, and could kind of get the, the kind of scope of it. But, and, and, uh, again, this sort of innate power in pixels that, that uh, you could represent something so sort of, um, sort of meaningful with, with something so sort of uh, kind of similar. So uh, obviously it worked a lot in three dimensions and these are some more pixels. Uh, that's my head, which I stand in with. The, I work a lot with connects and things, but this was kind of pre-connect, you know, kind of explain this. Um, and lots of making sure I'm and stuff. And, and um, basically, yeah, just, just again, there's this sort of relationships between these things which are, which are really quite artificial. And, and uh, you know, these things could never really exist in the real world because they're, they're too clean, they're too perfect. Um, and yet we kind of accept them uh, in the sort of representation. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of working a lot now with the space in between pixels, where, where there's, there's obviously it's, it's sort of this infinitely small space, um, which is really, really great for, for working with the maths and the geometry of you know, perspective, and, and which we all see with all the time. And, uh, and it's sort of like experimenting with that and sort of Around with it. Um, this was another kind of, sort of slightly less abstract piece, and this was a, a Connect based artwork where a big video projects one normally stands on, and nothing happens. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm not really interested in interactive art where you go like this, and, and something happens, and you go, oh, that's nice, and, and if you go. Um, this, this movement's become really ubiquitous, I don't, I don't know why. I was exhibiting at Connecticut in the early in the year, and people just come up to it and just keep going like this. You get very upset that nothing happens. And, uh, but that's fine, because that's their interaction. Um, so so the, the piece basically stands still, you have to be still. And it will slowly pick up your outline, and it will use your outline like a spray paint, stands, And you will slowly sort of, kind of be projected into the scene. Uh, and then the longer you stay there, the paint will start to drip. Uh, and I spent weeks modeling digital paint dripping down walls. Uh, and, and it will dry, and then, so if it dries, and then you do the splash of the little, you get the most streaky ones, and if it's wet, then it sort of spreads out more. It's really, um, it's a, t t a lot of messing about, very, very small floating point numbers. Um, but that was, it was a sort of real nice sort of piece that, that you kind of projected into it, but only if, only if you sort of spend time with the piece. Um, and it's, it's kind of as interesting in uh, the sort of comparison like, like with, I guess, yeah, I guess with, with the spectrum or whatever, you know, it's kind of more time you spend with the technology, the more you kind of get out of it and sort of you have this sort of relationship. Um, but the gaming side never left. Uh, this was uh, this is Martin I, I mentioned earlier. This is uh, a project we did, which was an Inspire Mark thing. Uh, I built my own game controllers, big pads, because they had to withstand kids uh, hitting them. And they all ran into an Arduino, and that ran into some custom software. And we basically did track and field. But, but all the characters were drawn by kids from schools. And then we, we animated them all. It was like an 18th month. Uh, project. We had 10 like, events and, and were swimming and long jump. And, uh, and everyone would come along and have a, have a go. And, uh, the 400 meters was the best because people were exhausted by the There was kids to go and go home now. Uh, <laughs> but it's a yeah, really nice, um, fun project. And, and uh, again, I think, you know, just kind of communicating a, a kind of playful uh, side of, of you know, sort of putting them into these, these kind of strange uh, kind of worlds. Um, so quickly, just last two, just mention uh, some model. This, this is a piece of my robot companion because uh, the residency with, with Harpture, we, we get to play with robots, uh, which is really cool. And this is this is a, a research robot called Charlie. It's, it stands. It's, it's about an eight-year-old kid. I don't know. I might do something on it. Um, 
Um, but we, we designed the headers uh, with Anna, who's um, uh, also asked of Mesna, so, and, and uh, so we, we designed this head where there was a connect in the chest, and you approach the robot, and the robot would turn to look at you, and then its face would start to morph and turn into your face, uh, but slowly. So, so you sort of you kind of go, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, it's, it's got my face. Um, and it was uh, really exploring um, kind of the idea of, of robot companions in the home. You know, what would you want them to look like? Um, and the idea that, that would you want them to look a bit like you? Would that make you feel more comfortable if it was like a sort of family member? Um, and, and some people said, yeah. You know, I mean, some people said it was the best looking robot they ever seen. Some people, I mean, when we first showed it, um, there was one girl hiding around the corner. I mean, I don't want to stand in front of it, it's going to steal my face. And, you know, so it really sort of like the whole range of, of um, reactions that we, that we have to that. Um, but that's, that's kind of part of a much bigger thing, I think, which happened now. Uh, and this is a, a big kind of, um, there's lots of video mapping stuff, which I'm sure you know, I've been doing it for far longer than uh, <laughs> And this is one with uh, like seven projectors in a big sculpture, and, and you've got a kind of video sort of going around, and, and we're just doing um, a big cannon event in, in Paris, um, which was kind of fun. So um, I was trying to sort of, again, try to sort of sum up um, the, the, the sort of, not, not in a nostalgic way, I mean, I mean it's been, you know, it's been lovely to sort of look back and, and sort of think about the spectrum and, and the sort of, <coughs> Well, there's a sort of big part it, it played in mine and, and many of us sort of experience at the time. Um, but what it kind of means now, what it, what it, having gone through that and, and 30 years down the line. Um, and obviously, yeah, as I said, you know, we, we were given this first kind of opportunity to, to play with these concepts which, which um, were really accessible. I mean, I, I know I joke about the manual and stuff, but the computer was brilliantly designed, you know, hardware and stuff. Uh, and it just made it available. And, and anybody who, who wanted to have a go could have a go, you know, and these things were quite cheap. And, and that was really kind of sort of empowering and, and uh, you know, kind of exciting. And, and I think, again, because the hardware was similar, we could do so, it sort of encourages its strength. Um, it was one of the last computers, I, I actually think the Amiga was, was kind of my last computer. Uh, you can know the whole machine. Everything, hardware, software, you know, all the, all the, even the, all the little funny things that you know, you press this combination of keys, the membrane thinks that actually you're pressing that key, but you're not. You know, it's, and the clock timings that we had about earlier in the motion, um, all, the, all this kind of universe of, of knowledge, um, you, could, you could hold a lot of it in your head and really push the machine, which you know, obviously we saw again and again and again. again. People writing games and the, the demo scene now, you know, they're still finding ways to, to push this, this thing. Um, so, I guess, you know, so where, where kind of I'm at is, is if I'm the programmer of, of a piece of art, uh, if I'm the author and I put this code onto a computer and then you look at it or interact with it, um, like, like with, the, with the shadows piece, it's like, it's not, I haven't created anything that you can see. It's you that's creating it. It's, it's your outline. It's your, you know, people do all these kind of crazy movements. And almost, they're being, are they being the artist or, you know? So it's, where, where is the art, you know? So I'm sort of really fascinated with that, the way computers kind of open up that um, uh, kind of conversation. And, uh, so I'm sort of like, playing about that. Um, and this, this, this feeling of, of this feeling of externalization, externalizing, um, which was again going back to that first program that I wrote. It's the idea that, that you write a piece of code and you kind of enforcing your it's like part of your will, part of your uh, thought that you've externalized and, and you've made something happen in a completely separate kind of entity. Um, and you could scale this up and you could do things for good and you could do things for bad or different. Uh, but it's, it's kind of that, that kind of power, that, that kind of, which I think was the kind of key feeling that I felt. 
um, is, is uh, something that is sort of really interesting to, to um, uh, sort of look at. And a, and a slightly contentious statement, because I, I do get asked this a lot. No, I don't think programming is, is, is art. I think because it's, it's uh, my analogy would be that, that you know, painting is, is not necessarily art. You can paint the wall with emulsion, and that's not art. But you can use this painting you know, to create art. You know, to, to, so, so programming, you can write accounting software, that's, that's not creating art. But if, if you're an artist programming art, then it's still not quite art, it's the thing you're producing. It's not, so it's trying to tap that one on the head and clear that. <laughs> Um, and I, I still love going to do painting. It's um, just like Minecraft, as you probably know. So uh, I did meet Clive Sinclair. Um, I met him in the Groucho Cup, as you do. Uh, I was there for a private event with Ralph Stedman, uh, who was auctioning off some of his work. Uh, Will Self was there, and I was checking. Got a signed book from Ralph Stedman, he drew a picture. And I'm just thinking, oh, I just can't be any happy. This is just lovely to find something. And then I see Clive Sinclair standing 10 feet away from me. And I go, oh my god, I can't believe it. Uh, so I, I bound over and I go, Clive, Clive, Clive. I just want to say thank you for, uh, you know, for ZX and Wolf Spectrum. You know, I'm just starting off on this, this fantastic voyage and, and uh, so excited and still excited. And I just wanted to shake your hand and say thank you. And he's like, oh, it's, it's pretty nice. And, are you into hardware or software? And they go, I'm into software. And they go, I do hardware. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. it uh, I mean, you know, and then this, this incredibly uh, attractive woman sort of comes up, sort of bounces up, and says, like, Clive, we're going to the next club. You can bring your friend to the club. I don't know, but, uh, you know, but that was kind of sobering. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And, and uh, so I have to give a quick plug because um, some of you may know that it is Alan Turing's 100th uh, centenary of his birth this year. For a long time, Clive Sinclair was kind of my Alan Turing, but uh, I've, I've since you know, learned of my ways. Um, and there's lots of, lots of events going on this year, obviously, and there's a Turing uh, exhibition of, of uh, artwork, which, which I'm in as well. Uh, and I'll be doing a live sort of AV show, sort of DJ and kind of in a Waterman's gallery in London on uh, June the 23rd, which is his birthday. So, um, uh, yes, maybe if you want to do that. And it's, uh, you can get the Dork boat on that day and, and go along the Thames, like two hour crews with talks and, and lots of other this kind of stuff. And, and then when you arrive at the gallery and, and you get curry and uh, do more geeky things, and it's, it's good fun. So, I'm um, so going to that. Thank you. Alex, thank you very much indeed. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments for, for Alex and, and uh, his, his story? Yeah. Do you still have any of your old computer equipment? Um, well, it's funny you should I thought it would be nice uh, if I did a new artwork for the ZX Spectrum. Um, so I, I wrote one, uh, and it was an interactive piece uh, where basically you, you can make sounds down the microphone, and, it's, and it kind of uses the it makes the whole screen go crazy. And, and by doing different kind of tones, you can get different bars and different layers. And, and you know, it's kind of quite simple, but it's, it's kind of quite pleasing. I wrote it in, in Spectacular. Um, using Tommy Young, the ID, and then um, got it all working and, and, and chucked it on so that my 48K rubber key issue to the spectrum. Um, and it didn't work at all, uh, because Spectacular doesn't actually model the, the input-output sound properly, because uh, the pins were just joined with the resistor. So, but I thought I'd, I was going to take the spectrum apart and do the, the composite video mod so you can and I opened it up and I did the mods and that was fine, but I snapped the cable for the keyboard and, and so I mean the whole it was, and then that took hours. I mean it's a catalogue of disasters, but, but I've just bought an email bro, so that was good. Um, so yeah. But it's just about surviving. Sounds just, like you have better luck with the software than the hardware. Yeah, so I really should just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
five with you. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions or comments for us? Okay. Thank you very much, Alex.